Thanks for joining us. Uh, another special episode of the British Journal and the Mad Science Films. Uh, welcome to the Mad Science Studio. Uh, Jim is just down here out of frame, blowing me off. And this is just a quick video, as quick as we can make it, so this is going to be really about my editing skills, uh, but how to speed up your editing workflow. Uh, as you guys will know, uh, we churn out an episode a week of this. Uh, some episodes we record 40 minutes worth of footage, which we try then cut down, because we talk a lot of shit. Uh, but we try to boil it down to between five to ten minutes. And a lot of non-fiction editing, there are some simple tips too that we can kind of speed up and help you with. Step one, get all of the clips that you need straight onto your timeline in as chronological order as you can, as you can manage. So for the vlog, obviously, we kind of, believe it or not, it's not scripted, um, but we, we kind of record it in a, in a straight session. Um, when we were filming on the GH4, that chops into five minute clips uh, on the Sony it's a 30 minute clips so we drop that into into order there step two back in the days of old school uh, Adobe Premiere before Premiere Pro there was a lovely toggle which you could use to actually kind of fast forward the clip and it would still play the audio at the same time now they got rid of this in the like the last couple of versions of Premiere Pro and it was killing me but I found a shortcut. So if you want to play stuff at uh, double speed, just hit the L button and that'll play at double speed. If you want to play at triple speed, hit it again. If you want to play at a quadruple speed, hit it again. But I mean, it, it's getting pretty unusable at that stage. Now I listen to most of my podcasts at least double speed. Um, so it'll give you an idea of what is being said. Now often you might, you might just be editing it and you're not actually recording it. So you might not have an idea of what the gist of what they're saying is. Step three, the most important thing is to familiarize yourself with what's being sa said. Um, don't worry about visuals at this stage. When it's something like a vlog or an interview with somebody, the most important thing is the audio, what they're, what they're saying. That's how the meaning is gonna be given. So go through, eliminate any hesitations, eliminate any ums and ahs, cut out any repetitions, any weird tangents that they go on. Um, and a cool tip that we learned from our good friend Tom Savory, cheers Tom, is highlight the gaps in between the two clips and then hit delete and that will just shut them all together. So the most important thing is you're just sorting out the pacing and you should be able to then listen to it, double speed or, or, or normal speed at this stage and just get an idea, does it flow? Does it sound well? Does it sound like the guy knows what he's talking about? Have you removed any ums and ahs, any gaps, any bits where he's going ah, any bits where he's having a drink of water and all that kind of stuff. Hey, step four. Then you can work on ways to smooth out the jump cuts. So if you just play it as it was, obviously the person would be jumping around like this and it'd look really jumpy. Now for a vlog, that can be acceptable. Uh, it can also be used for effect. When you're doing something more traditional, such as a behind the scenes featurette, an interview with somebody, it's kind of out of place. Uh, a lot of people do cross fade, cross dissolves, um, and, and they don't look great. So what we tend to do is if you've got, if you're shooting in 4K and you're still uh, gonna be exporting something that's gonna end up on Blu-ray, you've still got some wiggle room. So what I'd suggest is if it's been framed nicely as say a medium, um, which tends to be you know the typical framing for an interview, then shooting on 4K, you've then got the option to actually punch into a close-up. Step five. If you don't, then find out from your uh, DVD, Blu-ray distribution label what they prefer to, to use. Um, you can use clips from the film itself to put on top of the uh, audio and that you can hide cuts that way. Still images, if you're allowed to use still images, uh, a lot of producers of Blu-rays uh, I think it's acceptable under fair use. Some people don't bother. So find that out in advance, because otherwise uh, I was on a, a job for, um, uh, DVD label, added in loads of posters and stills, and then it came back for one of the big studios that they just didn't even want to, you know, kind of get into the, the fair use argument. Uh, so I had to take all of that out and then use other tricks to actually hide the cuts there. Step six is if you're going to use cutaways or inserts, keep them on their own video channel. Um, so for uh, a typical uh, uh, timeline, the sequence that I've got, V1 will be the master, V2 will be the close-ups that I've punched in on, V3 and V4. V3 will be clips from the film and V4 would be any still images that I've used. And that way it's just easier if you need to make any changes. Step seven. 
that point, you can actually start to then look at the final image in terms of using an adjustment layer. So again, drop an adjustment layer up on V5 or V6, depending on how far you've got up to. Um, and then at that, that point, start thinking about the grade. If you worry about a grade earlier on, it's gonna just lead to a whole bunch of hassle and slow down your machine in terms of editing. Stop it! Okay, then when looking at exporting videos, uh, Control M or Command M, or whether you're using a PC or a Mac, that'll load up your export media. Uh, and I always recommend using the media encoder through Adobe. That way it frees up your Premiere Pro to allow you to edit. Um, and you can set something off to queue. Um, in a future episode, our good friend James Morrissey uh, will give us some advice on what export settings are best to use depending on your project. Anyway guys, I hope that was helpful. Uh, let me know if there's anything more that you need from us and we'll see you soon. Is it blowing me off? That's not a thing. <laughs>